Hey there crafty friends, it's Tina here from the Scrap and Rabbit blog and I'm so excited today to bring to you the new 7 Kids Craft Store August 2020 release. I am going to be working with the Birthday Fairy stamp set and it is just absolutely adorable. There's also a YouTube hop and a giveaway so make sure that you check the description box below for the links and then you can check out the projects that the design team members made using the other sets. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and get all of my images stamped using some VersaFine black ink and some clear embossing powder because I do love to emboss my images before I color them. I heat up my heat tool for a few seconds to get it nice and hot and then I go ahead and melt that powder and then I get those nice vivid images and these stamps just stamp like a dream. And here I did an entire sheet and now I'm going to go ahead and get started coloring. I'm just going to record myself coloring one of the fairies because I'm going to use similar colors and the same style of coloring for each of the images. Now for the skin tones, I like to start off with the E11, blend out with the E00, and again with the E000. I go in after I get that first layer down with the E04 to add a little bit of shadow and depth and that really just helps the color to pop a little bit. I don't color the center, the center of the face until the very end and when I'm blending it out. And then I will use the E0000 for that. I went ahead and added a little E11 for the little nose. And for the cheeks, I'm gonna come in with the R21 and blend that out with the E000. Now there's the legs and the arms, and eventually I'll find those little ears. Lots of detail in these adorable images. And again, using the same colors, I'm going to go ahead and color in that skin tone and blend it out. She is just too cute for words. So there's her little legs and her little neck and her hand. And then I believe I found the ears, and so I'm going in there to use the same colors to go ahead and get those ears colored in, those adorable fairy pointed ears. Now that her skin is colored, I'm going to start working on her hair. Going in with the E37, I'm just going to draw out a few strands and kind of get an idea of which direction I want to color my hair in. Then I'm going to blend that out using the E35, going for a nice little light brown hair. The E31, I'm going to go ahead and blend out some of those lines, leaving some space for the lightest color that I'm going to use in my hair combo, which is the E51. Now I'm coming in with a darker color because I want some more contrast, and I also want to add some shadow under her floral hairband, and so I'm going to use the E29 to do that. And just kind of do a little outline there. That really adds a lot of contrast, and I think it helps the image pop a little bit more as well. Going back in, blending it out with the E31, and then again the E51. Not a lot of hair there, so it's not going to take a ton of color but I'm just going back in there where I feel like I needed a little bit more color around the edges of her hair. Once I have that blended out, then I can move on to the next image, which is going to be her dress, the next part of the image. Using the V17 for my dark purple, I'm going to add the shadows in this image is helpful because there's already lines in that skirt helping you to go know where to put the darker colors. I blend that out with the V15, the V12, and then the lightest color being the V01. Going back in there for another layer of color. Again, just following the lines that are already there on the dress. You can extend them out as well if you want. And then I'm just keeping the outer edges of her dress on the lighter side. The purples, I find you get the best color with three layers. 
and I wanted her dress to be a little bit on the darker side so that is why I added a lot of color. I'm giving her matching shoes. Her little slippers there are also going to be purple to coordinate with her dress. And then going back in there with the darkest color again to add even more depth and contrast. And then blending out Once her dress is done, I'm going to go ahead and color her wings. And I'm going to use the V25 to draw out some little veins and kind of feather them out a little bit. Go over those lines with the V22. And instead of coloring in the wings all the way, I'm going to go ahead and grab my Spectrum Noir Sparkle Marker. And that blends out the Copics a little bit, giving it a little bit of a softness. And then, of course, adds tons of sparkle as well. Now for the florals on her hair band, I'm going to use the R56 as my darkest color and the R85, the R83, and then the lightest being the R81. Adding one layer of the pinks gives a very soft color, but of course I'm going for a little bit deeper color, so I will add two layers in this same combo for her floral hair band. And that R56 really just helps that color to pop a little bit more. And I really love how this color combo is turning out. For the leaves, the green combo that I'm going to use is the YG67, the YG63, and the YG93 as my lightest. Now the first time coloring this, I wasn't really sure what was florals and what was leaves. And so I did go back in there and color the buds purple. Once I realized that, oh, those were flowers, I need to add some more color in there. I'm also going to add the green to the platter, the cake platter, which also looks like a leaf. I guess it could be petals or it could be a leaf and I chose leaf <laughs> for the platter. And then of course I'm going to color in those leaves for the berries using the same three green colors. Once I have those leaves done, the berries I'm going to choose a different color combo and that's going to be the RV17, the RV55, and then the RV52 going for more of like a raspberry color combo there and adding that little bit of Co uh, contrast with the light to the dark really helps those berries pop and it gives the illusion of having that shine. Now for the candle I'm going to go back in or the, actually for the frosting I'm going to use the same colors the R85, R83 and the R81 for the cake frosting and then for the cake itself I'm going to use my E42 and E41 using the darker uh, lines across the bottom of the frosting and then blending it out and then I'm going to add some little dots on there for texture. For the flame, the R17 for the center, blending out with the R15 and then finally adding the Y15 gives a nice little yellow orange flame. And then I had wasn't sure what color to do the candle and I just went back in there with the same pinks that I did for those flowers in her hair. Now this image here is my favorite, this adorable little mouse, and I'm going to use the E43, the E42, and the E41, which is one of my favorite critter combos. And this little mouse is just too, too cute. And blending out the little ears, as well as bringing the dark to the light towards the center of the face. I usually like to color the very center of the face last so that it is the lightest and I won't add a first layer the first time going around. Going in there with the E43 for more depth around the edges of the ears and around the face, blending out with the E42. And then finally bringing that color to the front using the E40. Following that um, same cheek color that I used with the fairy, the R21. I'm going to blend that out and then go and fill in the body using the same color combo as the face. Keeping the 
front part of the mouse the lightest, blending out with the E40. And giving a little bit of flicks to give it some fur-like texture. And I just think that this little mouse turned out so cute. For the ears, I'm gonna use the R30, blend it out with the E41, and then use the same colors to add little tufts of hair in the front. And you can't forget the tail, E42. For the hat, I'm gonna use the same leaf combo that I used for the florals. And that's gonna be the YG 67, 63, and 93. And dark, going from dark to light from the center of the leaf on out. And that just makes for an adorable little party hat. Of course, you can use whatever colors you want. I was trying to stick to what I thought was the leaves, the leaf color there. Finally, the little T grays, the tonal grays for the nose, T5, T3, and then a little dab of the T7. Here are my finished colored images that I'm gonna use on my project, and I think that they turned out so cute. I did use the same colors as you saw with, with the little critter and the fairy throughout the rest of my images. I did use my scanning cut to cut the images out. For my card panel, I'm using a slimline die, a scalloped edge one, as well as Distress Inks and my soft blending brush to go ahead and blend out three different colors. I start out using the sponge sugar to get that nice first layer there at the very top. And I'm going for very light, so I'm not going to do a lot of layers, but it does take quite a bit of work with the little brushes to get that nice smooth light color. I'm using the Bristol Smooth cardstock which really does help with the blending and really makes it a lot easier. The second color is the milled lavender so I'm blending the pink into the lavender and I use a post-it to prevent getting any oils from my fingers that will leave marks on. Once I'm done with the lavender I'm going to use the bundled sage for the grass part of my scene. Again, I'm blending it out and then I'm going to add a couple layers there to get a nice smooth blend, but I'm not gonna mix with the green with the purple as I'm blending. I'll leave a little bit of a separation there because I don't want to get any kind of a brown color. Now that I have my panel inked, I am going to go ahead and splatter using the uh, shaded, shaded lilac and milled lavender. I'm adding these little purple flecks to my cardstock and I think that it looks so pretty. And then for the greens, I'm gonna go to the shabby shutters and the bundled sage. Once I get that done, I have the acrylic white paint that I'm going to water down a little bit to add some white flecks throughout my card layer there. And I think I love the way that it looks arranging for my final card and I also did a little memory decks card so mimicking the same inked panel with the scallop outline and I used uh, a memory decks die to cut out that card panel and then once I get my images arranged I'm going to go ahead and glue them down but first I will stamp my sentiment to make it easier and I'm gonna go ahead and stamp the two sentiments in a layer using the same VersaFine ink and the clear embossing powder, and then heat dry them with my, tool, my heat gun to melt that powder. And once I have my sentiment down, then I will use the glue. <laughs> and I find that that's a lot easier to, to have my uh, sentiment stamped before I do the rest of my layers. Using the same liquid glue, I'm gonna go ahead and adhere this layer to my slimline card base. I'll finish gluing down the rest of my images on my card and my little memory decks, Rolodex card. I'll go ahead and glue those images down. I'll have to trim that little banner down to make it fit on my card. And then once I get all of the images, glued down, then I will go ahead and embellish with some sparkly little gems. 
These little gems are from the Pink Fresh Studios, and I chose the pink, the purple, and the green, sticking with the same color theme throughout, and I'm also going to be using my art glitter glue for them. I find that they hold the gems down the best. Once I have all of my little gems glued down, I am done. So thank you all so much for watching. I hope you will join along with the release blog hop. You can find the links in the description box below. I really appreciate you stopping by my channel today and watching my video. Please leave me a comment. And if you have any questions, I'll be happy to answer them. I hope you all have a wonderful day. And until next time, happy crafting. Bye for now.